okay? And they're all plotted based upon whether or not price are closing above the 34 period EMA high or below the 34 period EMA low. Okay, blue candles plot when they're closing in between those two levels. So I've got this bearishness that I can see in the candles, and I've got these power stat support levels waiting just below. Now, interestingly enough, sometimes you'll get a cluster of power stat support levels. Like notice right now on the Euro US dollar, I've got the there's a number of levels kind of in a very uh, tight area. Let me show you here. Let's blow this chart up a little bit. You'll notice that I've got the 15, 30, and 60 minute. I'm sorry, right there. Anyway, that's what I want to show you. I've got three time frames as far as their, their support levels within the power sets clustered up in a very tight area. And notice the low that we had made pretty much nailed the top of the area and then bounced up. Okay, again, these are just another way of identifying support and resistance on a chart. So if you're trying to identify where prices could move to in an effort to find support, resistance for stop losses, for profit targets, even to confirm your entries, these can be very helpful. Let me show you a, a, a chart that I'm actually trading this morning. That is the Dollar Canada and the 240 minute time frame. Now, I'll show you the 240 with the chart pattern overlay. Again, the emerging patterns. And by the way, for those of you who are utilizing the PowerStats plugin, I would highly recommend that you create two windows for your auto chartist chart pattern study, which is have one that exclusively shows emerging patterns and one that exclusively shows completed patterns. We discussed this last week, and I'm sure we'll discuss it again in an upcoming webinar. But I wanted to make sure you understand that the version, the, the setup that I'm using is ex on the plug-in setting is showing me exclusively emerging patterns. Okay? So let me show you what I did here. I've got a falling wedge pattern that is just slicing down lower. Take a look here. I'm going to basically kind of emphasize this downtrend line. This is the downtrend line of the falling wedge right there. I just basically outlined it with a bright or yellow so you could see it. In fact, I'll even thicken the line up a little bit so you can see it even better. All right. Can you all see that bright yellow line that I've just drawn over the, the downtrend line of the falling wedge? Okay. Take a look at the selling pressure at the resistance of the downtrend line. Then jump on over to what's occurring right now on this chart. Now, again, if you go to the 15-minute time frame, you can see all the different overlays. So where is my resistance expected to be coming in at this downtrend line? It's actually overlapping really nicely with the... Just bear with me for a moment. Okay, it's overlapping really nicely with the 95 double zero major psychological level. Okay? So bear with me one moment here. I think my connection might have hiccuped for a moment. There we go. I'll just recall up this chart. There we go. 15 minute. So take a look. Over the next 15 minutes, look at where my resistance is projected. Okay. But take a look at how, how stacked the 15, 30, and 60 minute power stats resistance levels are sitting basically between 95.03 and about 95.10. So in this area, over the next hour, is where the resistance is expected to basically stack up against 
the dollar Canada. Now I add this resistance, this power stats derived resistance to the downtrend line of this falling wedge and the overall downtrend of the dollar Canada. Now when I say overall, some of you might be saying, well, Rangi, if you look at the intraday chart, the 1530, it's in an uptrend. And you would be correct. If you followed me here in the room for these auto chartist webinars, you know that not only does the auto chartist look at the initial trend of each time frame and chart pattern individually, okay, but when it does so, not only does it do that, it does that because you could have a daily time frame which is still very much in a downtrend or a 240 minute, such as the case here, in an overall downtrend, while shorter term time frames are in an uptrend. And that's the situation we have here with the dollar Canada. The loonie has moved up, uh, has really weakened against the U.S. dollar today. We've, they've had a lot of data released out of Canada. So the loonie itself has weakened. The dollar Canada has, has moved up higher in reflection of that. So we have uptrends on the 15, 30, and 5-minute time frames. Okay, so you can see that very short-term intraday strength on the loony, but it's feeding into what is an overall downtrend. So depending upon your view of the dollar Canada, mine is from an overall standpoint, the trend is down. So counter trend entries would be buys, and they are valid. If you want to take some sort of counter trend entry on a 15 or 30 minute time frame, they are valid, but you want to keep in mind that they are indeed counter trend. Okay, and, you want to, and, and my advice is to stick to the shorter term time frames to take advantage of that. The same would go for, say, the Swiss franc. Okay, if you're looking at, say, the New Zealand dollar, U.S. dollar, the trend there is up, so counter trend would be a short. So make sure you, you recognize what the overall direction of the market is that's assessed by the daily time frame, and then look at the individual market trends, and you can do that through the initial trend of each pattern result. All right. So again, my expectation is for resistance in this area. All right. Now, I could very well be wrong. One of the things I'm going to watch out for is the possibility that prices could find buying support above the 9500 double zero level. I've got to consider that as, as a realistic possibility, that we could see support build above that level. We haven't seen it yet but I have to accept that as a potential reality, okay? And if that is the case, then I want to be very cautious about uh, taking this trade, perhaps, or at least being very vigilant about managing it, all right? So what I am, again, focused on is the downtrend line resistance, the expected resistance that I'm expecting, that I'm seeing here plotted over the next 15 to 60 minutes. And just bear with me one moment here. What I want to make sure that I also consider is whether or not there will be buying support above 9,500 on a pullback. So it's not, I'm not as concerned about the thrust up higher into this layer of resistance of the power stats. I'll be more concerned if support is found at, say, the 15-minute support level. All right, so this is the, the loonie's continued weakness against the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar is bouncing a little bit. So you're, you're seeing some of that reflected here, okay, in terms of the loonie losing ground against the dollar and correcting higher. And you can see here we're, we're, we're just now getting into that resistance of the falling wedge. Now, if we continue to persist, if we continue to persist higher, what could I potentially see here? A falling wedge reversal, right? Trending patterns can be traded in potentially three ways. 
exhaustion at the downtrend line resistance and a continuation lower. Okay, a breakdown through the support of the pattern, which we'd already seen some time back. It's the blue line right here, or a reversal. Now I'm not going to be too aggressive on the reversal, especially not on such a longer term time frame. If I will be taking any kind of buy entry on the Canada, dollar Canada, it's going to be based upon the 15 or 30 minute time frame, which are in uptrends. Longer term time frames, 60 and the 240, I will not trade counter trend. And we do have a downtrend overall on the dollar Canada. So again, I'll be watching this area very closely. And again, these are, this is an area that's identified specifically by power stats, and it, and it also happens to be overlapping with that major double zero psychological level, which often will have a lot of momentum behind it if the double zero is broken, okay, or if the double zero is, you know, to the upside or to the downside. So there could be a lot of interesting price action occurring right in this group of pips that we're seeing and also plotted by the power stats right here. Okay, so I have a request for the Euro Yen. Sure, no problem. So we'll look at the Euro Yen's overall direction, directional bias. We'll also look at the Euro Yen on the 15 minute time frame to look at the support and resistance outlined by the power stats. Okay, so what do we have here in the daily chart of the Euro Yen? What is the overall direction of this time frame? If you look at the Euro Yen right now, you'll notice, again, the daily chart to the left-hand side, we've got a downtrend here. Okay, and actually yesterday, yesterday's price action, in terms of the way that 